This video is sponsored by AudioMika, manufacturers of the interconnects and speaker cables used by a British audiophile. For more information about these and their other products, please click the link in the description. I think I need to start with a couple of apologies. Firstly, I'm only covering digital sources, so sorry to the vinyl enthusiasts out there. I have nothing against turntables. In fact, some of the finest systems I've heard over the years have had analog front ends. I can't presently accommodate a turntable in what is primarily a family space. I'm used to getting ribbed about it by some of my Patreons, but it's not something that's going to change anytime soon. Secondly, I haven't reviewed a CD player in 2024. If you'd asked me casually, I'd have said, yeah, I must have, but I haven't. I've checked. So apologies for that. That is something that I will address in 2024. That leaves streamers and DACs. And if I'm honest, that is primarily my area of interest. It's where advancements in hi-fi move the fastest. And there have been some really interesting products that came my way in 2023. I reviewed a couple of streamers for give or take 700 pounds. They threw up some surprises. For the last four years, I've been using an Aurelic Aries Mini that used to retail for 450 pounds and sounded better than the equivalent Blue Sound node at the time. Adding an MCRU linear power supply significantly improved its performance. I was convinced that any of the current streamers on the market below 1,000 pounds weren't gonna touch that. I was wrong. So let me give you a breakdown on the two streamers that I think are gonna be number one and number two on most people's wish list. They're looking to spend money in this price category. The Blue Sound Node X retails for precisely £699 in the UK. The case may be plastic, but it's nicely finished and well put together. The Node's simple, understated elegance wouldn't be out of place in the home of non-audiophiles who object to sharing their space with audio equipment. Blue Sound have been smart about the connectivity of the Node X. It has a 6.25mm quarter inch headphone jack on the front. On the rear are digital outputs on coax, optical, USB and HDMI eARC, so you can connect your TV and use its remote control to adjust volume on this device. The single USB port is a shame because if you attach external hard drives, you have no USB output to connect to external DACs. The BlueOS app, now in version 4.0, is very slick. Everything is intuitively placed. It's fast, reliable, with the ability to customize screens and create playlists across platforms. The Blue Sound Node X has similar levels of resolution to my resident Aurelic MCRU streaming combination, but the sound is more colored. It has a distinctly warm presentation due to a weightier bass and lower mid-range, but that wasn't the surprise. The surprise was that I wasn't expecting it to throw out a bigger presentation with a wider soundstage than my streamer. But I was fortunate enough to have another streamer here to audition at the same time. I can't think of another product this year that has hit the market with a bigger splash than the Eversolo DMP A6. For £759, you get aluminium CNC machine casework. That is normally the preserve of devices twice this price. But it's the 150mm 6-inch LCD touchscreen display that will likely grab most people's attention. It's just something that you don't see on devices at this price. Not only does it allow you to access directly the menus, where there's plenty that you can customize to your preference, but it's nice to be able to display cover art as well. One look at the rear, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that the Eversolo has all the bases covered with all the digital inputs and outputs you could ask for, but there are a couple of significant omissions. No I2S, but more importantly, no HDMI eARC. The HDMI port that you see is bizarrely used to output multi-channel audio. Ah, before I forget, there's no headphone socket either. It is a truly balanced DAC though, based around two ESS Sabre 9038 Q2M chips with balanced XLR analog outputs, as well as single-ended RCA. The ability to install an internal SSD drive of up to four terabytes is a great feature. It can turn the DMP A6 into a cost-effective music server. You can get a two terabyte drive, enough for thousands of tracks, for about a hundred pounds. There's not much to complain about with the user interface either. Customized from Google's Android 11 operating system, menus are located where you naturally expect to find them. The processing is super fast, easily a match for the Bluesound operating system. My only gripe 
is that there isn't the option to create playlists across platforms, although I'm assured that that is coming in a future firmware update. The DMP A6 pulls more information from recordings than my Aurelic Aries Mini and the Blue Sound Node X, making it the most resolving of the three, but it also adds a little bit of coloration to the sound. There's a little bit of prominence or extra emphasis in the upper mid-range and treble regions. That means that it can sound bright with systems that are already heading in that direction. There's no getting away from the overall value for money though, and that's why the Eversolo DMP A6 is my best source component of 2023, below £1,000. I'm pretty selective about the products I get in for review, and in this price range I generally look for something that goes beyond, or at least is a departure from your typical Delta Sigma kind of DAC. You know the kind that normally is based around AKM or ESS DAC chip, with a decent linear power supply and a discrete output stage. You can get all of that for £700, so there has to be a reason to spend more. I make no secret that I like many R2R ladder DACs. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last few years, you're probably aware that the Denifrips Ares is one of the most highly regarded DACs for about £1,000. In March 2023, I reviewed the 12th anniversary model of the Ares, which had updated software, some minor internal tweaks and one important additional feature the inclusion of an I2S input. I described it as a game changer. I'll link to my full review in the description of this video if you want to know more. But essentially, it allows the Aries to connect to external DDCs, digital to digital converters. Such as the Denifrips Iris DDC that I reviewed in 2021, it optically isolates all digital inputs from noise and has a superior clock, not from the two grand Denifrips Pontus, but from the three grand Venus with temperature controlled crystal oscillators. Adding the iris takes the performance of the Aries from being the best act that I've heard at just a whisker over 1,000 pounds to one of the best acts that I've heard below 2,000 pounds. For 600 pounds, it's a great upgrade. The Aries 12th has since been replaced by the 12th-1. It's the same DAC in nicer clothing, billet aluminum casework, CNC machined, like its more expensive brethren. I've given Denifrips plenty of stick about this in a recent video on how to choose a DAC, so I'm not going to dwell on this. Let's move on. In February 2023, I finally got round to reviewing the hottest DAC of 2022, the Gustard R26, retailing directly out of China for circa £1,600. Many owners and some reviewers had claimed that it was the best performing DAC on the market, below £5,000. Such was the hype at the time. Build outside and inside is impressive, with separate transformers feeding the digital and analog sections. Top quality parts are used throughout, such as Nishikon gold-tuned capacitors in the power supply. Circuitry is clearly partitioned and well laid out. The R2R ladder network and fully discrete output stage is on the right. Like all Denifrips DACs, the R26 has a fully balanced architecture, with XLR and single-ended RCA analog outputs. There are all the digital inputs you could expect, including I2S. The Gustard R26 is more than a DAC. It has a basic streamer that supports third-party UPnP and DNLA streaming services. I liked it. I liked it a lot, enough to keep it as my reference DAC below £2,000. It's a step up in performance from the Aries, more in line with what you'd get from the Pontus, but it's a different presentation to Denifrips DACs, more precise, more analytical, and drier in tone. It's very resolving, and it has that three-dimensionality that you associate with the best R2R ladder DACs, something in my experience that many chip-based DACs struggle with. Most, but not all. Not the Merison Ferro, a Swiss-built DAC that retails for £1,500. There's an optional external linear power supply for £850, but you can buy them as a pair for £2,200. The casework is all metal, but nowhere as substantial as the two Chinese DACs I just mentioned. This is a pure DAC. An LED lights up when you power it on, and another illuminates when you lock into one of the five inputs. There are balanced XLR and single-ended RCA analog outputs on the back. Two coax, two optical, and one USB digital input will be enough for all bar those looking for I2S or AES EBU. If you want to ditch the supplied wall warp power supply, the optional Power 1 
is connected by a five pin DIN umbilical cord that comes in the box. Internally, the Power One has three windings of the transformer to feed three totally independent power supplies, the left analog channel, the right channel, and the digital section. The Ferro has galvanic isolation on all digital inputs to suppress noise. The Burr Brown PCM 1794A DAC chip is a hybrid, deploying Delta Sigma conversion for the lower 18 bits and multi-bit conversion for the top six bits. I was curious to see if European manufacturers could match the best offerings from China, not in terms of chassis work or features, but sound quality. Oh yes, the Ferro's performance is comparable to that of the Denifrips Aries 12th anniversary. It has a more agile base and a more neutral tone than the warmer, fuller sounding Aries. And I'm sure the fact that it offers reasonable soundstage depth is down to that multi-bit DAC architecture, even though it can't quite match the soundstaging ability of the Denifrips and top end resolution. Adding the Power One opens up the soundstage from narrower to wider than the Aries. With more precise imaging, high frequency detail also leapfrogs the 1,065 pound Denifrips, even though it isn't still quite as resolving as the Gustard R26. The Aurelic Altair G1.1 is a streaming DAC retailing for 2,699 pounds. It has heavy duty casework that's a little bit more substantial than the Gustard R26. The G1.1 is another product that has a lot going on under the hood to suppress noise, deliver clean power, reduce jitter, and optimize wireless transmission. The DAC chip is a pretty conventional ESS9038 Q2M affair, but Aurelic don't use the inbuilt digital filter, opting instead for their own proprietary design. You're well catered for with digital inputs and analog outputs, with the only obvious omission being I2S to use with external DDCs. My only genuine gripe is that the display isn't touchscreen. Given what you get these days from Hi-Fi Rose and now Ever Solo for about a third of the price, this is something that Aurelic need to address in their next generation of players. How does it sound? Fantastic. I don't think for a second that all digital players sound the same, but the Aurelic Altair G1.1 sounds almost identical to the Gustart R26. The main difference between the two is the G1.1 has a slightly wider soundstage. It's detail refined and more importantly, three dimensional. And this time I'm chalking that down to Aurelic's proprietary digital filter. It also has a decent digital volume control that doesn't compromise performance too much. Most that I encounter do. So you can use this as a digital hub. And here's one more thing. You buy this from a dealer as opposed to a website out of China. So if something goes wrong, the level of support that you're gonna get is gonna be quite different too. And the DAC itself can absolutely hang with the best DACs that I've heard below 2000 pounds. Plus you have a decent streamer on top to boot. If I was looking for a one box digital solution around this price, this would be it. The Aurelic Altair G1.1 is my best source component of 2023 between 1000 and 3000 pounds. Chinese manufacturers seem to be taking over the DAC market at the moment, certainly below £5,000. And in July of 2023, I encountered yet another brand with a different approach to digital to analog conversion, not R2R or Delta Sigma. The Sengrand DS DAC 1.0 SC retails for £3,200. It has that battleship build quality that is becoming associated with premium Chinese DACs these days. Some interesting things are happening on the inside. Everything is converted to DSD, including incoming PCM signals. The DSD signal can be upsampled from DSD64 to 128, 256, 512, and 1024. Unfortunately, there are some ergonomic problems. The display is too dim, although not as dim in reality as it appears here. Also, the way the display is laid out is a bit confusing. It's clear that Sengran intend this to be a single box solution as there's no I2S or master clock inputs, but there are five digital inputs and single ended RCA as well as balanced XLR analog outputs. What this DAC is essentially doing is converting the data from a type that you find on CD to the type that you find on SACD. DSD is prized for its natural tonality and that's exactly what the DS DAC delivers. It also has exceptionally good scale and dynamics, very good detail, 
and something that I've spoken about a lot today, a 3D immersive soundstage. That's something that's true of my own DAC that retails for just £100 less than the same grand, my Denifrips Venus 2. But these two DACs do not sound the same. The DS DAC is bigger and bolder thanks to a beefier bass response and a more fleshed out mid-range, whereas the Venus 2 is a little bit more detailed and precise. It's an all too common trade-off between acoustic mass and resolution, and I wouldn't say that one of these DACs is better than the other. It's just different presentations that will suit different preferences. So let's up the game a bit. What do you get if you spend just over four and a half grand? Well, that puts you in Denifrips Terminator territory. The Terminator 2 12th anniversary is a colossal beast, weighing in at 19 kilograms or 42 pounds, bigger and heavier than many amplifiers at this price. Internally, you can see where the money has been spent, not only top quality parts throughout, but there are two very large O-Core transformers tucked away in a separate compartment below the main board, and just look at the bank of capacitors to filter power. That encased item contains oven-controlled crystal oscillators. I talk about this stuff in more detail in my main review, link in the description. The rear clearly shows Denifrips intent, all the digital and analog connections you can think of, and yes, I2S and master clock connections for further upgradability. Put simply, compared to my Venus, the Terminator gives you more, more detail, a wider and deeper soundstage and more precision of imaging. It missed out on my top outstanding award, not because of its limitations, but because of mine. That award is preserved for products that I consider to be the benchmark at their price, and the Terminator might be, but there's a couple of other contenders that I'd like to get my hands on before I make that declaration. And that's why I reserve the right to amend that award further down the line but it's the best DAC that I've heard so far, and that's why the Denifrips Terminator 2 12th anniversary is my best source component of 2023, above 3,000 pounds. My question for today is what are your favorite source components over the last year? And just to be clear, it doesn't have to be digital components, it can be analog components as well. Hopefully I can finally do something to keep vinyl enthusiasts happy. So please share what you like and the reasons why in the comments section of this video. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel, you want to see it grow and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. You may want to check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and other Patreons. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.